writing a book is really challenging for your personal, just how you see yourself, your, your identity. And first of all, you go through this, this argument you know, you're not supposed to write a book, Steve. What, what do you... In your own head, you mean? Yes, of exactly. Of course. And, and so you're losing that argument for a while, and, but it eats on you. And that still, I would imagine you still have that conversation before you begin a book. Um, so I don't have the conversation about, should I write a book? Because for your first one, you do. Mm -hmm. After you write your first one, the conversation is, who are you to write this specific book? which is, it's the same conversation. It just yeah. feels a little different. Mm -hmm. I just got done with a book um, I was talking to you about. Uh, Dan Sullivan and I are writing a book on why every entrepreneur should write a book. And he's like kind of the world's premier entrepreneur coach. He's coached like 25,000 entrepreneurs. And, um, and even that one, like you couldn't pick a field where I'm more of an expert <laughs> than even right. that one. I was like, is this, I don't know. Like it kind of, in me, it came out as I don't want to do it. Because there was no argument that you could make where I'm not an expert. I'm like a, just an absolute expert on this. And so I came out as I didn't want to do it, right? Uh, but I'm doing another book with a guy, Dan Engel, about um, integration from psychedelic uh, psychotherapy. And uh, that one, I definitely, like, uh, who am I to write this? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I had all the same thoughts. I have, I have a whole deck about this, about, like, um, I've... <laughs> You go down like uh, find all the great writers in history. I'll, I'll like I'll, I'll do that. I do this in in my workshops. I'm like you know name great writers. People are like oh T Tolstoy or Hemingway or whatever. And the, it doesn't matter who they name because I have like 50 slides of like put like all the great writers. And so like, oh you said Hemingway and put up the slide where he's like I, I feel like I'm a fraud. I feel like I don't know anything. Oh you said uh, you know Elizabeth Gilbert. I feel like I don't know anything. I feel like I'm a fraud. <laughs> Right? So, so you said Tim Ferriss. I know Tim. He's my buddy. He definitely feels like a fraud every single day, right? Like yeah. you get on the list. It doesn't matter. There's, I can't think of a counter. I'm sure there's one, but I can't think of a counter exception where someone is an accomplished, well-known writer who didn't have all the exact same emotions new writers have. So it came across as you didn't want to do it, but was it going on in your head that what if this book sucks? What if... What if I of miss course. the mark? What if I do a bad job explaining mm -hmm. something I'm supposed to be an expert at? Yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, like, oh, just like, it, and what that causes me to do is overwrite and over argue. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I have these ridiculous, like 6,000 word chapter that has bulletproof logic and arguments. And then well, I already know my problem. I know my issues now. So what I do is I've got a person on my company. I send it to them and I'm like, cut this in half at least cut out all the bullshit where I'm arguing with myself to prove to myself that I'm actually an expert mm -hmm. and just leave like what the, what my readers will actually care about. And we already know we laugh about it. It's like, go, go scrub my stuff of my emotional issues. Yeah. So does that fit? Some of it might feel a little bit personal or you you're over that where it doesn't feel so personal when someone takes out something or wait a minute, wait a minute. That was really important. That's why I spent some time here. Yeah. So, uh, I, I have a, a meme about this. Uh, uh, the, the, you, do, you, do you know like the Orange County Chopper meme where the dad and the son are arguing and throwing <laughs> chairs? You know what I'm talking about? And so basically like, like it's like the dad says, this is my favorite paragraph in the book. And the son's like, it doesn't, you know, it shouldn't be there. We need to cut it. It's not adding anything. And the, and the, the dad's like, no, it's staying in. It's my favorite thing. And the son, and we throws a chair. It adds no value to the reader of the book. It's only about you. And the last one, the dad's yelling. He goes, I'll change the whole book to keep it. Right? <laughs> so I absolutely, every book, there's a, at least a sentence, if not a paragraph or even a chapter that I just think is amazing and brilliant. And like three other smart people who I know and respect will be like, dude, this has nothing to do with the book. You have to cut this. Right. And I'm just like, no, but it's my favorite part. That's just ego, man, getting in the way. Like, it's just like a business, a business just exists to meet the needs of the people that it's serving, right? Both the owners and the employees and the customers, right? It exists to meet everyone's needs. And so and I know you know these business owners because I know them too, where they make their business about them, it's, yeah. it loses the mark. And oftentimes it fails because of that. Same thing is true with the book. It, the book exists to meet the needs of the writer and the reader, and that's it. And the needs of the writer 
are only follow on the needs of the reader. So the only way you're going to get your needs met as the author is to meet the needs of the reader. So that's why this book doesn't have a bunch of stories about me in it because it's got a couple, but the only ones that are about me are in service of teaching something that the reader cares about, right? It, same thing for all books. You can talk about yourself a bunch as long as the what you're saying about yourself is giving value to the reader. If it's not, cut it. I love it. So the way you get past yourself is thinking about who you're serving. value for the reader. Yep. 